Good day, grade 12 learners. Welcome to today's Agricultural Sciences lesson. My name is Zulu Fezega. This lesson is brought to you by the Northern Cape Department of Education in collaboration with Pagama Research and Development. We are still on our revision for paper two. And on today's lesson, our main focus will be on section A, of which is your short questions. Remember, section A is out of 45 marks. So by obtaining 45 out of 150, you have already obtained level two, meaning you've already passed agricultural sciences, paper two, right? Now, on today's lesson, you should be able to answer short questions for the upcoming examination. Analyze section A, meaning you should be able to analyze section A questions and provide correct answers. Now, when analyzing, when reading, we must read with understanding and then we must provide correct answers. For us to obtain marks, we must provide the correct answers, right? You must understand the rules of answering short questions and you must be able to score higher marks in multiple choice questions. And not only just multiple choice questions, also column A and B, give one word and also in correcting the underlined word. Now, as I've already mentioned that in your paper two, you will always have a section, or you will always have two sections section A as well as section B. But remember, our main focus is not on section B, but rather on section A that has the short questions. And remember what I said, it only contains 45 marks. And by obtaining 45, you already have level two, right? Now, let us look at this section A. Now, your section A for the final examination or for your preliminary examination, it is out of 45 marks, right? And we have already mentioned before or on our previous lessons that it has got four questions, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. Now, on your 1.1, that is your multiple choice questions. Now, on your multiple choice questions, you only have uh, 10 questions. And each question it has or it scores two marks. So in total for the multiple choice, you only have uh, 20 marks. And on your column A and B, you have only five questions. And for each question, you can only have two marks. And in total, you can only score, or it is out of 10 marks. 1.3, give one term or word. It also has five questions, and each question contains two marks. And then your 1.4, it has also have five questions. Each question has or it carries a mark, just a single mark, meaning the total for 1.4, it is out of five marks. Now, let us start with our section A and focus on the multiple choice questions. Remember what I said last time or on my previous videos, there are rules of answering section A. There are rules that must be followed when attempting on answering section A. Remember our first rule, we said you must, you must study, right? Second rule, you continue study. And then third rule, that is when you can just read the question or read the description or read the statement and then you continue reading the options that are provided to you. Now, let us look at this 1.1.1. And most of these questions, are based on price determination, right? And also, you must not forget that in section A, there is a mixture of different topics, right? Meaning there is agricultural marketing, there, is, there are production factors, and there's also kinetics. 
So all topics are included in your short questions. That is out of 45 marks. Now, we only have, I will only be focusing on the examples. Not, this is not the structure, right? But the examples, right? Based on certain topics. Now, let us look at 1.1.1. Now, 1.1.1, it carries two marks. Now you study, you study, and then you can read the statement. Now, let us read the statement together or the description together. Now, the description says, the factor that influences the supply and demand of the product. Now, in your multiple choice questions, there will always be keywords and that will always give you clues on what um, to choose or, or which um, option to choose or which answer to choose or the letter to choose or the option to choose. Now, let us read the description again. Now, we are looking for the factor. Now, the factor that influences both the supply and the demand. As we already know on price determination, that the supply has no relationship with the demand, but they are always influenced by a factor. There's just one factor that, that influences or affects both variables, or both variables. Now, for multiple choice again, you only have four options to choose from, right? Meaning you have option A, B, C, and D. And there's only one correct answer for this question. Now, after reading the description, you can always go through the questions or always go through the options. Option A up until option D. And once you are done going through the options, you can go back to the description and answer. And then by that time, you will be able to choose the correct answer. Now, let us look at the options. Now, option A, we are speaking of the attitude and values of consumers. Now, this attitude and values of consumers it only affects the demand variable. Does it affect the supply? No, it does not affect the supply. Meaning this one only represents the demand. So this is not the factor that affects or influences both the supply and the demand. Range of products available. Now, does this factor affect both the supply and the demand? No, it does not affect both variables. So the, the answer of B is incorrect. An increase in the supply of the product. Now, when there is an increase in supply of a product, does that affect the demand or does that affect both the demand and supply? Absolutely not. And then when we read option D, it says the price of the product. Now, when it comes to price determination, the price is influencing the demand or supply or in the market. The price has the ability to affect or to influence both the demand and the supply. Meaning the correct answer for 1.1.1 is D. Why? Because both supply and demand are affected by the price. Now let us move to question 1.1.2. Now let us read the description and go through the options and then read the description again. Now on 1.1.2, it says, the demand for agricultural product is relatively stable 
or inelastic. Now, as you are reading the description, you can see that here we are looking at the price elasticity or the price inelasticity, right? As the, as the, as the price affects the demand. How does the a price affect the demand? Because the price itself, it has the influence or the effect towards the demand. Now, the options that we have are because of the price of the product, the consumer's income increases, it is a source of food for animals and humans. The fibers are used in the fashion industry. Let's go back to the description. We are looking at the demand for agricultural product is relatively stable or inelastic because, is it because of the price of the product? Because the price of the product, sometimes it fluctuates, it keeps on changing. Now, as the price changes, sometimes that also affects the demand on how consumers respond towards or how, how they respond on the market. Now, A is not a correct answer. Now, the consumer's income increases. Now, when the consumer's income increases, does that re result to price inelasticity? No, it does not. It is a source of food for animals and humans. Is that option correspond with inelasticity? Yes, it does. Why? Because consumers need food. Animals depend on food. Meaning food is a need for animals and humans. Obviously, there will always be a slightly change or no change in demand. So people will not respond when the price increases or decreases. Right, and the last option will be the fibers are used in the fashion industry. Obviously, D is incorrect, meaning the correct answer for 1.1.2 is C. The demand is inelastic because the food or agricultural products are a source or a source of food for animals and humans. Meaning humans and animals cannot live without agricultural product, specifically food. Now, 1.1.3. We read the description and then we go through the options. Now, here we are looking at the law. Now, the question says, the law of supply implies the following. Now, what are our key words? It is the law of supply. Now, understanding price determination, you will understand the law of supply or the implication of the law of supply. Now, the law of supply implies one of the following. Now, option A. Now, let us try and answer this one together. I've already shown you on the first two questions. Now, let us try and respond on this one. Remember, for you to answer this question, you must understand price determination. Now, we have option A. Now, option A, it says, the higher the price, the few products the producers will sell. The higher the price, the few are the keywords for this answer. The few products the producers will sell. Option B, the higher the price, more product producers will sell. 
or the more product producers will sell. Option C, the higher the price, the more consumers will buy a certain product. D, the higher the price, the fewer consumers will buy certain product. Now, before you even choose the correct answer, you need to understand the relationship between the price and the supply. That the relationship, it says, it is directly proportional. The price is directly proportional to the supply. The supply represented by the producers, the individuals or the farmers that are producing the product, that are offering the product. So you need to understand that the producers have this mentality of making money, meaning they only sell when the price in the market is high. They will only supply product when the price of a product is high. Why? Because they want to make money. Remember, they need to pay for credit. They need to buy more inputs. They need to buy fertilizers. They need to buy fuel, electricity. Meaning there are a lot of resources that they need to buy. They need to pay loans that they obtain from different financial institutions. So for them to obtain profit, they need to sell product at a higher price. Meaning they need to supply product when the price is high in a market. Now with that understanding, you should be able to answer 1.1.3. Now what is the answer for our 1.1.3? when understanding the relationship between the price and the supply in a market. The producers want to sell or they want to supply agricultural product when the price is high. Meaning the correct answer will be B. Why? The higher the price, the more product producers will sell. They will only supply more product if the price in a market is high. Why? Because they want to make more profit. I hope you understand and I hope that we are still together. Now let us move to 1.1.4. Now 1.1.4, it is a law again. And this one, it is the law of demand. The law of demand states that now, what are our keywords on our description? It is the law of demand. Meaning you need to take out everything that is not included or that does not form part of the law of demand. Remember on the law of demand, we are speaking about the price as it affects the demand. Supply is not included. Why? Because there is no relationship between the, su the supply and the demand but the relationship is towards the price. Now, let us look at the options. Now, the law of demand states that, A, if the price of a product falls, the key word will be fall. If it decreases or if it is reduced, if it goes down, the demand for it will increase. Let us look for keywords together. Remember, we are looking for the correct answer that works with the law of demand. Now, option B, if the product of, or if the of a product or the price of a product, so the price, that should be a price here, the price, of a product rises. The demand for it will increase. Option C, the higher the income of consumers, the less the demand 
they will be for a specific product. There was an increase in the income of consumers. There was an increment. Then an increment led to less demand. Does that relate to the law of demand? Now, option D, the greater the number of consumers, the lower the demand. Now, here, you must remember, here, you must remember that the law of demand or the demand only has the relationship with the price. It has the relationship with the price. It is influenced by the price. Now, the demand represents the consumers. You need to understand that. As much as on the demand, we are looking at the quantity that consumers want to buy at a specific price. But you need to understand that who represents the demand? It is the consumers. Now, the consumers at all times, they want to buy product at a lower price. They demand more product when the price is low, when the price is reduced, or when the price falls in a market. Why? Because they do have other, or they do have bills, school fees to pay for. So now, if the price of a product in a market is low, that is when they will demand more product. Meaning the relationship between the price and the demand, it is inversely proportional. When the price is high, the demand will be low. When the price is low, the demand will be high. Why? Because consumers want to buy at a lower prices or want to buy at lower prices. Now, what is the correct answer for our 1.1.4? Understanding the law of demand. Now, the correct answer will be A. Why A? If the price of a product falls, if it is reduced or decreases, the demand for it will increase. Now think about this example. Let's just say, let's just say we have the apples. 10 apples are, are provided or supplied by the producers. And each apple costs two rent or one rent. We have 10 apples and each apple costs one rent. If we have a producer that has 10 rent, the, or the consumer, sorry, that has 10 rent, that consumer will buy all the apples. Why? Because each apple costs one rent. But when the price of that apple increases to two rent, and the consumer also st or still has the 10 rent, the consumer will only buy how many apples? Five apples. Why? Because the price has increased. Meaning that shows that the relationship between the the relationship between the demand and the price it is inversely proportional. If the price again were to increase, and let's just say each apple now costs five rent, and the consumer has ten rent, the consumer will only be able to buy how many apples? Two apples. So that should show that at all times, even if we are looking at the number or we are looking at the quantity demanded, consumers will always buy. They will always get more product when the price is low. They will always demand more product when the price is, oh, is low. More consumers will buy products when the price is low. Why? Because they don't want to spend more money or much money or high money or high price or they don't want to spend more on the product or agricultural products. Now let us move to our 1.1.5. Now, one of the following factors influences the supply of a product. 
one of the following factors influence the supply of a product. Now, the range of a product, does that affect the quantity supplied or the quantity that a supplier or a producer is willing to sell at a specific time? The range of a product. Government subsidies and taxation policies it is the government subsidies and taxation policies, taste, and preference of the consumers. Increase in the number of consumers. The increase in the number of consumers. Does that affect the price? And then let us answer this one together. What is the answer? Now, the answer will be B. Now, why B? Because there are legislations. Why B? Because it is the government that controls economy, that controls the tax. Then 1.1.6. Price in elasticity of demand. Price in elasticity of demand. Now, when we speak of in elasticity, we are speaking about the price as it affects the demand or supply. And this question is only based on the price as it affects the demand. We are looking at how consumers will respond when the price increases or when the price decreases. Will there be a major change in the demand or a slightly change or not change at all on the quantity demanded? Now, let's look at the options. Now, here we are looking at the correct combinations. And for this question, there will always be three correct answers that matches with the description. Now, let's look at these questions. Now, if there is a price in elasticity, if a price increases of a product, consumers or the demand, there will be a slightly change of demand or no change at all. That is price elasticity. But once there is a massive change, then that is no longer price elasticity. There is no longer price in elasticity, but instead price elasticity. Now, when the price increases, the demand, it has to have slightly or no change at all. Now, let's look at these options. Now, Roman figure one, remember, three of these options are correct and one is incorrect. It does not match with the description of price in elasticity. Now, if the price of bread increases, the price of bread increases by two rand. Now, we are looking at how consumers will respond to this increment or to this increase. Now, there is no other alternative Consumers will still buy the bread. Consumers will still buy the bread, even if the price increases. The consumers are still buying the bread. They will still buy the bread. That is price in elasticity. There was no change in demand. An increase in price, resulted to no change in demand. There is inelasticity. There is no relaxation or contraction. There was no change. When something is elastic, it changes. But when something is inelastic, it does not change the shape. It does not change at all. Now, let us look at Roman figure two. Now, if the price of a slab 
of brown chocolate increases, consumers will buy white chocolate. Now, consumers used to buy brown chocolate. Now, the price of a chocolate has increased. Now, consumers are changing to buy a white chocolate. Meaning, towards brown chocolate, there was change. That was caused by the change in price. Is that price in elasticity or price elasticity? That is definitely price elasticity. Why? Because there was a change in demand. There was a change in demand. Consumers responded by saying, we are stopping now. We don't want to buy the brown chocolate. Now we are moving towards buying the white chocolate. That is price elasticity. Does this description matches with inelasticity? No, it does not match with inelasticity. Why? Because consumers responded. Let us look at um, the next option. Now, if the price of diesel increases by 50%, Farmers will not buy vehicles using petrol immediately. If the price of diesel increases by 50%, farmers will not buy vehicles using petrol immediately. Is that price elasticity or price inelasticity? Now, if the price of maize increases, Consumers will still or will continue to buy maize because it is their stable food. It is the need or it is a need for animals and humans. But in this case, for humans. 